How's it going, everybody? This is Trix Madness Master. Welcome back to yet another online Elite Smash match. And, buddy, you look incredible today. Just in case no one's let you know, buddy, hopefully you're having a fantastic day. What we do on this YouTube channel is take your comments, yes, the comments from the viewers, and turn your comments into videos and answer your questions. So if you're someone who has a question you want to have it turned into a video, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, leave a comment, and I'll turn it into a video. So today's question comes from a player named Electromere, and his question was essentially this. His question was, do you think the game would be more competitive and players would take the game more seriously if there was a real ranking system online. He references Valorant's ranking system and also Japan's Smashmate. So during the time of this recording, I'm actually having a conversation with him in the comment section right now, and I will say this with regards to a ranking system in Smash. If there was in fact a ranking system in Smash online, yes, the game would be much more competitive. If there was a leaderboard that says this player is number one in the world, not necessarily based on GSP, but more so his actual kills or not kills his wins and losses i'm still used to saying kd from call of duty but his wins and losses saying okay this player has this many wins or this many losses and this is where he stands in the world are you 240th in the world top 500 in the world first in the world whatever it might be and so yes if there was in fact a top 500 or some sort of ranking it would absolutely make the game more competitive and i can say this for sure because there is a competitive nature in people naturally people want to compete for something even if things are not competitive you'll find a way to be competitive something like rock paper scissors for example even though there is no real skill in rock paper scissors besides making reads or potentially conditioning somebody and trying to play to the best of your ability with luck i will say there is the ability to make it competitive people will put money on the line people will say best three out of five whatever it might be something as simple as that humans naturally want to be competitive so yes if you add a ranking system to smash online of course it'll be more competitive but here's the thing as well and this is going to be a very hard pill to swallow for a lot of people and i will say that that is if there is a ranked mode in smash ultimate you will see thousands of people get shaken out of the scene because they get exposed as actually being quite terrible at the game very terrible actually and there's nothing to hide behind one of the greatest feats that nintendo has ever put into smash ultimate is having the ability to have appreciating gsp and that is where you don't play the game but your rank goes up you can be someone like myself who actually took a 10 month yes 10 month hiatus from playing smash online elite smash whatever you want to call it and i went up multiple millions of gsp so me along with a lot of other people when they see that if you're someone who is sitting in let's say 10 million gsp and you went up to about 13 or even 14 million gsp and you were not playing you get to jump back into the game and you feel like you are going back in right where you left off and it feels like it's totally fine but if you were someone who was top eight in the world let's just say and you took a 10 month break and then you are now top 10,000 or 30,000 in the world you might just say you know what fuck this i'm not playing anymore it took way too much work way too much effort to try and get to that level and now it disappeared because i didn't grind this game forever and completely sell my soul to try to become number one in the world on an online game so you know what it's just not worth my time and i'm gonna quit instead and i will say logistically speaking that is entirely fair if you quit something for a long period of time you should not be rewarded and also applauded as a player who is a very high level player even for myself i don't consider myself to be very high level anymore because i took such a long time off and i spent a good portion of the year working on call of duty content on tiktok i put out hundreds of videos on tiktok i gained over 60,000 followers putting out content on that grinding it every single day i even became a coach for call of duty modern warfare 3 and warzone for a very long time and i was not playing smash so for myself i do not consider to my i do not consider myself to be a high level player in smash anymore i say mid high level player at best unless i am possibly trying very very hard to get back into smash shape but as of right now i would not consider myself to be incredible at the game could i get back into my peak form when i was competing three times a week way back in the day absolutely i could but for whatever reason if you think that i should be at 14.5 million gsp without playing the game for 10 months that is fucking crazy and i absolutely have no business being there and i'm not saying this for my falco being that high i'm talking about my sephiroth and my pyramithra or my fucking banjo or many of these characters who i played to be one or two times and never touched again yes i have sonic in elite smash and i probably played him a total of three times and he has over 14 million gsp i absolutely do not deserve to be there with that character but i will say this as well and this is part of the conversation that we were having and actually sparked the idea for this entire video and that is this if smash was meant to be truly competitive there would be a lot of regulations and standards put on the game and it would not be labeled as a party game but instead it would be very very sweaty and very very bland or mundane a lot of the hype and crazy or goofy things that happen in this game a lot of people 
would not have happening and they would not enjoy watching the game because it'd be a lot of Sonic versus Sonic or Steve versus Steve. Or I'll go as far as to say this even. It's actually quite common that high level characters or broken weapons or whatever you want to call it in many other games get banned. Just like how we have banned stages in the game because it makes it uncompetitive to play in a giant stage where you can run away for free or there are items or stage morphs or trophies or all kinds of bullshit in the game we say no no no, we're not doing any of that we're going to try and make this as competitive as possible but there are also characters in the game that should be banned for a multitude of different reasons there are characters that should be banned because they are so incredibly uncompetitive that they shouldn't even have a chance to lose in the game but there are also some characters that are so fucking broken and we know this that it just makes it so if you don't play this character you don't have a chance and so i want you to take a hypothetical ride with me just now just bear with me a lot of you guys are not going to agree with this this might be one of the hottest takes on the entire channel i will say but if this game was truly meant to be competitive there would probably be about seven to ten characters that you can play and that is it they'd be characters like Sheik, lucina maybe wolf and i'm not even entirely sure who else but characters that are very basic very neutral heavy and they have no ability to just kill you out of nowhere maybe even wolf might be the exception as one of the best characters in a meta like that when you don't have characters with low profiling super long range comeback mechanics multiple jumps and all other kinds of bullshit. I will say this, if this game was to be truly competitive and nobody would want to play this, and this is why they don't do this, but imagine just this for one second, imagine that Smash Ultimate, the competitive way to play this game, you had to play Sheik. That's it. If you're gonna play this game competitively, it has to be Sheik versus Sheik, and that is it, because you have the same character with the same toolkit, with the same ability to get kill confirms. If you don't know how to do combos, then that's your own problem. You have no ability to just finesse people for free with things like comeback mechanics or super armor or wonder wing or any other type of bullshit. And as I'm describing this, you're probably thinking, yo, this sounds like ass. This does not sound fun to watch or be a part of, and I wouldn't want to fucking do this. And here's the thing, you'd be 100% right. This would be not fun to be a part of whatsoever. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys are actually arguing, what about games like Tekken or Street Fighter or Guilty Gear or, or 2XKO? All of these games have a multitude of variety in their characters and they're considered to be competitive. What about that? And I'd say, yes, those games are much more competitive because you don't have the ability to fall off the stage and die at zero, for example. You also don't have the ability to stall somebody out for seven fucking minutes while you are losing and then win off of their sheer aggravation. And so, yes, I would say traditional fighting games are much more competitive than smash that's why they're called traditional fighting games that's why they're in the fgc that's why they're not considered a party game like Smash is. but i'll even say this and it's gonna piss some people off but it's just too bad it's a hard pill to swallow but you're gonna just have to swallow it i said what i said competitive fighting games are only competitive to competitive fighting game players however to competitive gamers in general where the rules are the same for every player and the skill set that is provided to every player for their character is the exact same when they look at a fighting game they say this is some horse shit. Why the fuck can you just blow up the screen and I can't? Why do you have the ability to reach 10,000 miles and shoot 500 missiles while I'm over here trying to be Jackie Chan? Why is it like this? This is not fucking fair. And I don't care if you say it's competitive because there's no items. This is not actually competitive. Competitive games and competitive sports in their rawest form is this. Your skill versus mine. Your mind and your abilities versus mine. I'll give you an example. Tennis. If you are better than me at tennis, I will never beat you. It will never happen. I will a thousand percent lose every fucking time. If we are having a three-point contest in basketball, and you are a better shooter than me. There is nothing I can do to stop you. You are better than me forever. That's how it is. Until I practice and until I get my skills up, I will never just win for no reason. And now let's take it a step even further with video games. We'll talk about 1v1 snipers, whether it's in Halo or Call of Duty. If you are a better shooter or if you have better reaction time or if you have the ability to make better reads than I do, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do in the moment to just win 
for no reason. I can't switch characters. I can't get a better weapon. I can't do anything because it is truly competitive. It is you as a human being and your skills and your thought processes versus mine. And if I am not adequate, I will lose forever. And if by some stretch of a miracle, I somehow happen to take a single game, or let's say we're playing a one-on-one -on -one in Call of Duty or Halo, I happen to kill you even a couple of times, it's because I actually did something that was good. I actually used some sort of skill or I locked it the fuck in and I did something good versus I won or you made a mistake for no reason or by pure luck, something just happened where the stars aligned and for no reason, I'm just on the winning screen and you're clapping for me. And so the hard pill to swallow is this, is that Smash players say that they want the game to be competitive, but the truth is that if it truly was competitive and you got exposed as being quite shit at the game, you would quit. It's one of the biggest scandals that's happening right now, I'll say, in Call of Duty and a lot of shooting games with SBMM. They try to protect the bad players and put them into horrible lobbies where everybody sucks because if they got exposed and they had to play against the real demons in this game, the company would actually lose millions of dollars, possibly billions of dollars over the course of years, and it would be catastrophic if they made it truly competitive in the public lobbies for these games. But there's a reason why they have ranked and they also have public lobbies. And I understand that completely, but guess which one is much more popular than the other? The most popular way to play any video game is for fun. It truly is. The whole point of video games is supposed to be fun. So when people say, I want ranked, I want to see where I stack up against the world, it's a very small population of the people. And the people that think that they want these things and they think that they're nasty at a game like Smash or a fighting game, for example, most people suck at fighting games. And I'm not even gonna try and sit here on a high horse and say that I'm incredible at fighting games either myself. I'm someone who is a content creator first, a YouTuber first, and I will say that as a player of Smash, this is what I just chose to make my videos about. Imagine that you went into Elite Smash and every single person you fought against was as good as Sonic's MKLeo, Spargo, or some top eight player from New York who was a fucking demon. You would not want to play that mode for more than 25 minutes because you're getting fucked on all the time, every single day. And it doesn't matter what you do, you're, you're going to literally just get shit on. And this is in the confines, this is in the confines of Smash being played in the way that it is. Imagine you had to fight against somebody as good as MKLeo in a chic ditto every day. And that's all you could do. You would not want to play that for very long. And there are players out there that say that they actually do want to do that. And that is fair. There is a subsection of people who would actually want to do that because they do in fact want to be competitive. But I will say this, if we're gonna talk more about the business side of things, or even the competitive nature of Smash in general, why wouldn't you play a game where your skills are much more warranted like a traditional fighter? I'll say a game like Tekken, where there are much larger prize pools and the potential of just winning for basically no fucking reason is much more slim. The potential to just beat somebody by camping them to time is basically impossible if not literally impossible if you don't have good neutral and you don't practice your combos you will never rank up but if you are a good player then by all means if you're able to do it then you should be doing those things the problem is with a lot of players is that they're trying to make smash which is a party game a truly competitive format when the tools provided to you are in fact not competitive and i can say this as a known fact that i know for a fact players use excuses as a shield. They do use excuses as a shield, for example, in Smash 4. When Bayonetta came out in Smash 4, that character was putting people on the map who were winning tournaments who no one had ever heard of in their entire fucking life. They turned Joe Schmo into an absolute pro. And to make matters worse, and I understand that this video is getting kinda long, but this is also very important too, a very hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. I can't even tell you how many people I heard say out loud that if I, if, I, if I just picked up Bayo as well, I could be just as good. But they wouldn't do it because they were afraid of getting exposed. What do you do in a fighting game when you are being provided with the literal best character with the best tools imaginable and you still lose? What do you do in that regard? When there's no possible way to give yourself a higher advantage and all you have left is your skills and that is not enough. What do you do? You get exposed as a fucking fraud. You think you're nasty at the game when you're actually straight dog shit. So what do people do instead? They hide behind playing Ganon or Bowser Jr. or Zelda or Little Mac or any of these lower tier characters and say, from the distance, from the back of the theater, they say, if I played as Steve, I would be a top player. But they can't do it 
and they won't do it. And at least they win some games sometimes with their shit character, but if they try to do what they're doing in a actual fighting game, they would never win. And they know that. They're neutral as shit. Their punishes are shit. They don't know how to get combos. They don't know how to make reads. And they fucking would lose basically every single game. And so ultimately, this is why the majority of people who play Smash quote unquote competitively never leave the smash scene because they know that if they went to street fighter if they went to tekken or if they went to blaze blue or guilty gear or any of these other games they would get fucking exposed and here's the thing the developers of these games know this as well tekken 8 street fighter and also 2xko all have baby mode they all have a pulse mode where you push the b button and you do a full fucking combo because they know most people are ass they know that most people have a crazy ego and think that they are super good at these games when in actuality they are complete shit. And if you were shit and you knew it, you would quit. And if this game was truly competitive and you had to compete with your actual skill against someone else's actual skill and you could not just win because of your character, you would fucking quit. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this is in fact the truth. And I'm not talking about the party players, the casual players, the moms and dads playing with the kids, not them. I'm talking about the players who think they are nasty at video games and you're fucking not.